Everywhere, Adam Hewison here, president and founder of iKnow.com and co-founder of Market Club with your midday update for Monday, the 12th of November. You know, catching 17 falling knives is not a smart idea. And the reason I say that is because Europe is still in a mess and their ability to kick the can down the road is getting more and more difficult for countries like Greece and Spain. So 17 nations comprise the Eurozone. Think of them all trying to come to a consensus. I think it's very difficult, and I think it's going to be very difficult catching these 17 knives when they first start falling. You know, over the past four or five weeks, we've seen the Dow and the S&P 500 pull back 50% from their recent highs, and we've seen the NASDAQ actually correct 61.8%. All of these are Fibonacci retracement levels. I would not be surprised to see some sort of a bounce from those levels. You know, one thing I love about the markets, and that is they really do tell you the true picture of what's going on. That is why myself and along with thousands of Market Club members around the world are so confident that our trade trial technology will keep us on the right side of the market. Now, be prepared this week. Pay close attention to gold this week. A move over the 1,738 level will indicate that all is not well in the world and you should be buying gold to protect your purchasing power. This could be in the form of a futures contract or an ETF, that could be GLD or an IAU, the symbol, or physical gold. Really pay attention to that key level today, this week, 1,738. Now, one stock we're going to look to buy is the titanium metals today. The symbol is TIE. And two stocks you should be exiting right now, and that's American Electric and SanDisk. So let's go to the charts and uh, just refresh this up a little bit and see what's going on. I hope you all had a great weekend, but uh, we've got some interesting markets, of course. And let's start with the S&P 500. It's minus a 70. Now, the S&P 500 is yet to give us a major sell signal, unlike this is a 30-minute chart, unlike the Dow and the NASDAQ, all of which are in a bear market according to our rules. We still see these markets as going sort of somewhat sideways in the S&P 500, minus 70. So it's very borderline. That's the 200-day moving average right there. You can see just intersection. So we're just crisscrossing across this thing. I think we could see a pop-up from here, but uh, that is not necessarily the way to trade the market. You should be out of the market if you're using our trade triangle technology where the odds are in your favor. So long-term, still positive. Intermediate term, negative. So you should be out of the market. So let's go to our next market. That's the Dow. And the Dow, you can see clearly that we had a monthly on Friday at 12,778.90. A uh, little bit higher today. Really, this is a doji, which means there's a perfect balance between buyers and sellers. We're below the 200-day moving average. Not a good saying this will be the third, fourth day in a row. We've closed below potentially this 200-day moving average. Not a good sign. So minus 100 on the trade channels. You should either be out of this market totally or you should be short. So let's go to our next market, the NASDAQ. Now, this is retreated back 61.8%. Fibonacci number, you can see there's the 200-day moving average right there going through there. And you say one, two, three, four days in a row, you've seen this market close potentially below that level. I think we could probably see a pop from here. 61.8% is a key Fibonacci number. And I could think we could see a pop back up to maybe maybe the 3,000 level, maybe the midpoint of the Donchian trade channel. So let's see how that plays out for the rest of the week. Now here we are, we're looking at crude oil. Crude oil is sort of being flattened here. Uh, it's down a little bit today. We are 85.59. We closed last week at 86.02 or something like that, 86.05, yeah. So we're down a little bit for the day, for the week. And But nonetheless, it looks like it's trying to flatten out and uh, begin a move up. But we still have all of our trade triangles, minus 100, minus 90 in this case and indicating that the trend is still down longer term for this market. So pay close attention to that. So if we scope this out a little bit further, you'll get a better idea. If we go to six months, you can see we have a good support coming in at 80. There's actually good support at 84, which we think will probably hold. But uh, we want to see a little more evidence of that happening, which would be the we want to see the, the, the daily trade triangles turn green, and then possibly the intermediate turn green as well. So let's see how the rest of the euro dollar looks. Euro dollar looks, as, this is almost a classic pattern. I was looking at this this morning. You can see we've, we've got the, let me put my telestrator in on this. Basically, you just say there's the the V, we, we call a V right there. So this is a top, this is the top, this is a pivot point right here. And we pointed this out 
this is the 128 level, of course, and we're current, currently trading at 127.11, so, and we're looking for this market to go to 125. So we've got about two big handles on the downside in this market yet, so I think we'll see that happening. That's the catching the 17 uh, falling knives. I think that's going to be a real problem for the euro to sustain itself at these current levels. So let's see how it plays out, but the trend generally, longer term still positive, intermediate and short term negative. So this is a chart pattern we've seen before. We like the pattern. It usually indicates, and it's very reliable, indicates you're going to see lower prices. And the other thing to look at, which we've talked about, is let's just clear the screen and go to our Fibonacci retracement level. And uh, if you look at, put the Fibonacci in down to the lows, again, you can see 124.75, 61.8% Fibonacci retracement dovetails very nicely with that 125 level. You are oversold, so you are probably going to see a little more pressure coming into this market on the downside. So let's go to our next market, and the next market is going to be gold. Uh, gold came incredibly close to being a buy signal this morning before it reversed back down. Now here's what we're looking at in gold. And let me just put my Telestrator in on. And that is, here's the big number we want to look at, $1,738. If the market goes over this level anytime this week, we want to be a buyer of this market. We want to buy. Okay, we, this would turn our mid-intermediate term trade triangle green and indicate the prices, all prices at that point in time would be going higher. So again, watch that 1,738, put an alert, if you're a Market Club member, put in an alert in our spot gold, and it will we'll send you an alert that it's happened. So very, very cool thing to look at. But we're right at the top of the Don Chin trade channel. I would not be surprised to see this market pull back, maybe even to the 1700 level. But watch it very carefully because this is something I think could be a really, really good trade uh, for the end of the year and also for Q1 of 2013. So let's just clear that screen, go to our next market. And this is the copper market. Now the copper is actually not acting too badly today. It's actually bounced up. Uh, we're currently trading at uh, 346.80. Uh, we've got a little buy signal going there on the momentum, and if you look down to here, we're sort of flattening out, just beginning to turn up on the blue line on the MACD. All of our trade triangles, excuse me, with the exception of the monthly trade triangle, are red, indicating weakness, but the long term is still showing a longer term bullish picture for this market. And I think if we were to just simply go to a line chart and see if we can just possibly draw a line down there, but it looks like it, we're going to just see some sort of retracement back from these. The market's been very, very depressed and oversold. So let's go to our next market. That's going to be silver. Spot silver, again, uh, very close to giving a buy signal. Didn't do it. Turn back down. See where the, let's just put our, see where it's touching the top of the Donchian trade channel. So it's coming back down. It has very good support coming into this market right around the 31 level. I think 31.50 to 32 should be an area where the market should find some support. But we are a little bit overboard on the Williams Percent R. And on the MACD, if we go down there, I'll show you that the MACD. The MACD is positive, but it has turned up, which is, I think, a good sign, indicating a future for higher prices. Also, you've got the monthly trade triangles positive and the daily trade triangles positive. So I think, all in all, watch this market very carefully, just like we want gold very carefully. I would say a move over 33 would be very, very positive for this market. In fact, I think 32.80 would be a kick-in point. And let's just put that on the screen so we make no mistake about this. 32.80 is a basically a buy point on spot silver. This would turn this triangle green, indicating all of these triangles would then be headed higher. So definitely watch this level very closely. So let's go to the stocks we're talking about today. We've got exiting those stocks and some stocks to look, one stock to buy. And it also happens to be a metal stock. So it's up a lot today. It's about titanium. And the symbol is TIT, -T, like tie, like a tie tie. And it's titanium metals. And you can see it just opened up very, very strong. It's way up here. I would say what you may want to do with this is just maybe wait for a couple of days, maybe get a pullback to the 1450 or 15 level, but it really has made it, put a big base in this, the highest we've seen this market for some time. In fact, let's just scope this out a little bit further 
And this is the highest we've seen this market since, gosh, all the way back in January of 2012. That's pretty much the highest for the year. I think we're going to see this market go higher because, as I say, all of our trade channels, this hasn't registered yet, but it will register as a positive for this market. And uh, you can see our MACD is very positive. As this, this is a big, big, big move today. You can see bump, we've jumped up where it's up 42% for the day, which is pretty big, I know, but the reality is it can go a lot higher. And if you look at this stock where it's been in the past, it's been as high as 40, and this is, goes all the way back to maybe 50, uh, 45. So it still has quite a ways to go, and certainly if you can, let's just take everything off the screen, and let's just uh, make this very, very simple. And it's just a simple line chart. We'll take the, and we'll go a light, simple line chart. We'll get our trend line, and we'll go from the highs here to stretch that out. And that's just about as perfect as you can get it in terms of a trend line. So it's a long-term trend line coming in from really July of, uh, looks like May of 06. So it's a six-year trend line you're breaking today. Very, very powerful indicator. So. You can see to make a trend line, a perfect trend line, you want to see the following happen. Here's your start point, second point, third point, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. You need to have at least three points to make a valid trend line. For a valid trend line. And if you have three points, in this case we have what we said what seven of them, I think it's even it's even more valid. The longer the trend line, the longer term trend line. This is six years. The more powerful the move is going to be. So I think we'll see this market. If it pulls back, I, th I still think we'll see the market trade back up. Certainly to the 20 area would not be too much of a stretch in this market. If we get over 20, then I think we're looking probably at the 30 30 area here, which would be a a pretty good move from where we are right now. So that's the that's the stock, the one stock we want to be a buyer of today and tomorrow. Maybe buy half a position today if it pulls back, buy some more. So let's just clean that position, clean that chart rather, and go to our next market. Now these are markets to get out of, get exit out. This American Electric Power symbol AEP. Now we've looked for these markets with the criteria that we talked about. That's a stock that has trending. Trades over 2 million shares a day, very liquid and big markets. Now here's the market we're looking at. So let's just put that in. Let's go to like a six month and put our trade triangles in. Boom, you can see right today, it just kicked in there at 41.52, currently trading 41.07. This is not a good sign. Uh, potentially we can go lower and you can just, uh, if we scope this out just a little bit more, you'll see we get down to the 37 level, that too much of a trouble in my opinion. Now we've also turned down in the MACD, we turned down a few days ago, and if you look at our other indicator, put our weeklies in there, you can see we're out much, much higher levels. And this is, this is where you blend your tools. You basically trade with the trend, and uh, the last signal we had here was to be a buyer uh, right here. And oh, let me just take this uh, the trend line tool off. but. We was a buy right here at 39.22, and you're out at 43.80 because you buy on the main trend and you exit on the weekly. So that was a nice uh, 43.80, 39. So it's a nice uh, almost four dollar profit there, 10 percent profit in a very very short period of time, I might add. And now you're out of the market and you saved yourself all this pressure on the downside. Now it's saying exit period, the trend has definitely changed to the downside. So let's go to our next market, and that's SNDK, SanDisk. You, if you use computers at all, you're very familiar with this name. This gave a sell signal today to us right here, and that's a 4035. It's currently trading at 4055, so if you wanted to, you could actually sell it at a better price. And certainly this line here that we're looking at, the lows uh, right around here uh, at 4036, uh, it's definitely uh, we traded below that today. So I think this market looks, appears to me, I should say, is that it is rolling over to the downside. You've got all of your trade triangles negative, indicating lower prices. I think you can quite easily get back to this 32 level. 
and that's certainly eight dollars lower we are right now that's about a twenty percent return potentially and I don't think the risk is that great so again these last two stocks SanDisk and the other stock the AEP American Electric Power you should be out of those markets or you should be short uh, that's the only two ways we look at it. So, hey, this is Adam Hewison. We're back. I hope you had a great weekend. We're going to be looking at these markets. Be sure to watch the gold very carefully. You may see some more backing and filling there on gold and silver. But we want to be basically be long those markets eventually. So be mentally prepared to get long. So I'm Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, same place. Have a great trading day.